Hello, and welcome to another episode of our How To series. This episode is all about Marsite's VMS Lite. We will take you through how to install the software and how to do a basic setup of VMS Lite. This includes showing you how to add cameras to the VMS, how to edit the cameras you've added, and finally how to delete any unwanted cameras. A quick note before we properly begin, VMS Lite is designed to turn your PC or server into an MVR. This is usually referred to as a PC MVR. So if you install it on your home or office PC, then all the recordings will be saved to the hard drives of the PC you have the software installed on. So make sure to check before you commit to using VMS Lite to record that the PC you're using has enough storage. We usually recommend having at least one dedicated hard drive for recordings, but it all depends on the size of your system. With that out of the way, let's start the guide by showing you how to install VMS Lite. To start off, you'll want to go to the Marsite website and go to their download page. On this page under the header software you will see the download link for VMS Lite. Click the download icon and wait for the download to complete. When the download finishes you want to double click the zipped folder to unzip and access the software file. You should now see a .exe software file and if you double click this the VMS Lite installation wizard will begin. Follow the steps of the installation wizard like you would to install any standard software. When you reach the end of the wizard you can click finish and if you ticked run installed application the VMS will open automatically. The first thing you will see when you open VMS Lite is a login box. The default login for VMS Lite is username admin and password is password. You can also tick auto login so that you don't have to log in every time but we would advise against using auto login because it is a security risk. Instead, we recommend changing the username and password to something unique and using that to log in each time. When you click log in, you will be taken to an empty live view screen like the one on screen now. With the software successfully installed and running, we can now talk about adding cameras to the software. To start adding cameras, you'll want to click the settings menu in the top left of the VMS window and then click device settings from the drop down. A new window will open with a series of buttons in the top left a section labelled groups, and a space that once added will show the list of cameras on the software. A quick thing to point out before adding any cameras is the group section. If you right click in this part of the window you can create new groups. Groups are purely an organisational feature of the software and do not affect how or where the cameras record. Groups simply let you group multiple cameras together under one header. A good example of when you would use this is if you had an office building with cameras on multiple floors. You could group the cameras by the floor that they are on. Now to actually add cameras there are two options of how to do it. The first option is to click the search button, at which point another window will open and the software will automatically start scanning your network for any cameras. When the scan is finished a list of the cameras on your network will be displayed. To add a camera from the list you'll want to click on it and then enter the username and password of the selected camera. Click the group drop down of your selected camera and make sure the camera is placed in the right group. If you want to add all the cameras from the list you can click select all and then follow the previous instructions for all the listed cameras. Once you follow these steps you can click OK and you will be taken back to the device settings window where your selected camera or cameras will now appear in the added camera list. The second option for adding cameras is to manually add. Adding a camera manually is only really necessary if it is a camera from a third party manufacturer or if you are adding with something other than the IP address, like peer-to-peer -peer or RTSP. If the third party cameras are on the same IP range as the computer the VMS is installed on, then the device search should still work. We had both Hikevision and WiseNet cameras come up when we searched, but if they don't appear in the search then manual add is the way to go. To start manually adding a camera you want to click the add device button in the top left of the device settings window. When you do this, a new window will open with a list of manual adding methods. These methods include adding Marsite using the IP address, adding using OnViv for third party cameras, adding using RTSP, or finally you can add using peer to peer. Before you make a choice on which method to add your camera with, we should point out that when you add cameras with peer to peer, the camera has to be registered with Marsite, and the camera will only be able to record using the secondary stream. So we would advise that unless it is your only option for adding, to not add cameras to VMS Lite using peer-to-peer. -peer. Once you've selected your adding method, you will then want to enter the details of the camera you want to add. These details will include things like username, password, IP address, port, etc. 
With all the correct details entered, you will then want to make sure the enable box is ticked before you then click OK. The window should then close and the camera should be added to the VMS. So now with the cameras added to the VMS, you may need to edit some of the details of a specific camera. To do this, you will want to open the device settings window and then select a specific camera from the list before then clicking the edit device button. A new window will open displaying all the details of your selected camera, including the IP address, port, username, password, device name, and more. From this window, you can edit any of these details, but do be aware that any changes made here will only change the details of the camera within the software and not the camera itself. So for example, if you were to change the IP address here within the VMS, that would not change the IP address of the camera itself, and so if you had changed it to an address that did not match the cameras, you would lose connection to that camera. It may sound a little pointless, but the ability to edit these details does come in handy at a later date when for a variety of reasons you might have had to change the password or IP address of the camera, at which point the camera will disconnect from the VMS as the details of the camera no longer correspond to the same camera details within the software, at which point you will then open the edit window and change those details so that they match again and the camera will reconnect. The only details that you can edit from this window that won't cause any problems is the device name and the group the camera is assigned to. This is because both of these details have no effect on how the camera connects to the software. If you want to change the details of the camera itself, you can do that from the VMS by going back to the device settings window. Here you can change the IP address or gateway used by the camera by selecting a camera from the list and then go to the bottom of the window and enter the new details into the boxes and click modify. You can then also edit other settings of each camera by selecting one from the list and then click the Internet Explorer icon and a browser window will open with the login page for the selected cameras. If you then log in you can go to the camera settings pages and change whatever you like, but if you change any network settings in camera you will have to go back and adjust the corresponding settings in the VMS so that the camera will reconnect to the software. After you have made all the edits you need to the cameras you have added, you will then want to set all the cameras to record. There is quite a lot that goes into recording, and so we will cover setting up recording as well as playing back and downloading recordings in a separate video. After recording, the only other feature of VMS Lite you need to be aware of is how to delete any unwanted cameras, which out of everything you can do with the VMS Lite is pretty much the easiest. You simply open the device settings window again and then select the camera you wish to delete, before then clicking the delete device button. A pop-up will appear asking you to confirm that you want to delete this camera from the software. Click yes and that's it, the camera is deleted. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking the Use IP logo. Check the description below for links to our web shop, Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus feeds. If you want more videos like this, click the playlist on screen now. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.